show can be a little gay but if you're not that's okay you can listen and have fun either way Xena Star Wars Doctor Who guests and music and reviews Game of Thrones why Nona too promise there's something for you she nerds out we're girls that like girls that like dirty things Hello and welcome to the She Nerds Out podcast. I'm Kat. I'm Wendy. And this is Tara. On today's episode, we talk to Nora Dominic from BuzzFeed. She is our sister from another mister. Uh, That's the truth. We talk all things television, some of the things that we love talking about. She loves talking about too, and it was a really fun interview, so look forward to that. I think we could have gone another hour. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was... She is us. She we are her. exactly. She is us. We are her. I want her to be my friend. So <laughs> let's see. How... Are we not good enough, cat? No, it's not, <laughs> yeah, it's not that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's not that. It's fine. Was the cat Nora? Why don't you just go be with Nora sorry, then? Cat. <laughs> Nor cat. That's our. That's just our go on. Cat name. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have some. We have some mail. We're gonna read through some mail, but. Our little bales. It's like a manageable it's sack. It's a nice little week. sack today. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. It's a healthy sack. You know what I mean? Okay, then. What day Wendy, is it? Day? <laughs> Let's move on from sack talk. You brought it. So, you said it was small. Uh, yeah. So starting on the 17th, it's National Pack Rat Day. I feel like oh, I, no. from a family of pack rats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate that day. Uh, the 18th, National Visit Your Relatives Day. Check. Just did that last nice. week. So uh, I'm, I don't know. Don't worry about it. Oh, National. May, May 19th is hurting. National Devil's Food Cake Day and National May Ray Day. It only has two dates. Maybe we can com- like do a campaign to get National Snop Day on the 19th because mm. it only has two. Oh. That's an underserved day. What was the second? Oh. What was the other one? It's what what day? National May Ray Day. Is that? I'm May that Ray? Out. May Ray. If your name is Ray or Ray R E E, give everyone permission to call you, well, Ray. It's Somebody Ma- made so that shit up. Basically, anybody that is weak. Celebrating people. The idea is everyone may call you Ray on this day instead of hey you. What? Or sometimes what? maybe Rays get called sweetheart or not so. What the hell? Oh my gosh. I don't even know what that's what? about. Ugh. Let's move on. <laughs> May Ray Day. Somebody just pay a lot of money for that. Or maybe they didn't pay any money. Makes some bullshit. You know what's a better day? You know what's a better day? May 20th. You know why? why? National Rescue Dog yay. Day. Oh, yay. National Rescue Dog Day. I, you know, that's... there's other things, but really, what else do you I got to get a dog, y'all. I'm hurting. Mm-hmm. Well, and for a dog maybe you'll meet one uh in the uk yeah that'll be easy <laughs> it's so easy to bring yeah, yeah. The, the dog back super, mm-hmm. super easy super easy oh how did i miss this the 15th well because this is today that we're recording but it's national chocolate chip day i had to mention nice mm-hmm. it's all i mean devil's that. food cake on the 19th isn't nothing like that's it's more. not nothing i'm just saying there's only two most of these i look at i only read one or two but they have yeah. like five or six mm-hmm. I mean, there's there's usually several, but this one only had two. Come on, May, so step just, it up. May nineteenth, get on. May nineteenth. Mm. Well, I've got some dates that I'd like to talk about. Oh, this is terrible. Is it a good date? Where'd y'all go? Yeah, well, tell us all about Not it. That kind of like? uh, Not that kind of date. Not that kind of date. Did you gonna kiss her? Oh well, come on. <laughs> Uh, these are dates on my upcoming Snop UK oh, tour. Okay. Oh. But I think I will be joining a dating app. Oh, oh dear. Well, can we please? Maybe when I get back we, from my account. Can we make that a segment on the podcast? Can we please? Oh, oh please yeah. I'm do. sure that's going to really help me with my love life a lot. I mean, that's what everyone way, wants it to be broadcasted. Happens, Sarah, could it hurt? Everything could that hurt? happens on this date <laughs> is. <laughs> Damn, cat. I'm sorry. I'm in a mood, I like how okay? you like stopped and you got my attention. <laughs> Hey, wait, 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 Tara. This is not a throwaway line. This is a throwaway <laughs> line. This is good. You're going to love this. Sorry. Nora's got me all worked up. I'm so sorry. Wow. <laughs> wow. So anyways, anyway, dates, my dates, dates my dates coming up in the UK. <laughs> They're not actual dates, but dates I will be there. Well, maybe you'll so, meet somebody over there. Who knows? 
got some more specifics. Uh, special thank you to AK, Suze, and Martina that have been helping me plan. And nice. if, if you guys could see the emails going back and forth, it's like, maybe we could do this, but maybe also this, and then maybe this wow, also. I'm and so then jealous. What can we, but it's just all over the place. And then like, that's how I send it. And then, it, you know, they send things back. That's like, Ugh. yes, okay. And it just looks, it's more is um, it a, together. Is it a and thread? Or no, you're, it, not, you're each, not yet. Ah. Yeah, I've just reached out because each of them were kind of in different spots yeah, in course. England. So okay. I, uh, that's how it started. But already it's like coming together more, whereas before I had no clue what I was doing. Mm. Um, so, so thank you, everyone. Been very, very helpful. Um, so my, if you're in any of these areas, please reach out to us, sheenerdsout at gmail.com, um, because I'd like to, to meet you uh, on one of these dates. That is not a date, just a date, uh, but I will be in, in or around Glasgow, Scotland from June 13th through the 21st, mm. or I'll just say the 20th, because I'm leaving early on the 21st. I'm driving for sure now. Sure. Martina has assured me that it's not so hard to drive on the other side of the road. It'll be fine. So, yeah, it'll be fine. So I'm driving down to Shibden Hall. Oh, shit. <gasps> Shibden Hall from Glasgow <laughs> on the 21st. We're going to take a tour. <laughs> so the evening of the 21st, <laughs> I'll be in York. York, England, oh, UK. England, okay. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> the evening of the 21st, when I'm thinking like a dinner, mm. like a meetup type thing. Okay. And so uh, if you're around that area on that day, <laughs> let me know. Might just end up being Martina, Suze, and I. Uh, you know, that's fine. Sounds great to me. So that's my northern stop in England. Okay. Terra in the uh, north. Terra. <laughs> Winter is coming. Um, <laughs> And then on the 22nd, on the evening of the 22nd, I'll be in the Oxford area, which is down south. Mm. So that is my plan. So if you're in the north on the 21st or the south on the 22nd, <laughs> let me know. Let's meet up. Huge. Amazing. Or I'll oh. be in <laughs> Hamburg, oh. Germany Whoa. on the 24th and 25th. Hey -oh. If you're around there. Uh, <clears throat> anyway. That's it. <laughs> Hoping to get That's some folks. Nothing it's at all. Not, That's it. Exactly. That's huge. I mean, I'm just kind of breezing through the UK, uh, specifically to see core snoppers, snopplings, snop tarts. Caught up. Like you have, so, you have your anchor snop tarts. Right. And you're hoping that other snop tarts can, can join. Yeah. Them. Exactly. Awesome. So please don't be shy. Don't be shy. Mm -hmm. Don't be timid. Mm -mm. Don't be timid. Mm -mm. Um, yeah. Love to see y'all, but I'm very excited. It's like a month away now. Ha! <laughs> Freaking out a little. I'm like, <laughs> I have to get a COVID test. And oh boy, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll figure that out. It's gonna be great. You're gonna have a great time, and mm -hmm. we're gonna hear all about it. I can't wait. I almost had a mini Dallas snot meet up because oh. you know we talked about Jackie on the the last That's podcast right, and, and said, hey, if y'all are in Dallas, so I reached out and um. Uh, she had a lot of family stuff going on, a lot of things during that week. Mm. And I was incredibly busy during the week too. And like the one day he said, maybe meet up was Thursday. And I'm like, that's the day I'm basically at my house and replacing toilets. Right. And that's like, um, the one day that the person who lives there was off work. So it just didn't work out this go around, but yeah, maybe next time it will. Oh yeah. Ne happen. Yeah. Neek's down in Cornwall. It's like three hours I learned from where I'll be in Oxford. She's way down South. So I'm not going that far. But mm. yeah, anybody out there? She nerds out at gmail.com. Please. Please. <laughs> you sound so desperate. Please. Please. People are going to I'm, people are gonna I'm show risking up. my life to drive on the wrong side of the road to meet you all. Please come and come and see me. Yeah, I'll be fine. You just got to, you know, get the, that, the, the, your foot ready to, to drop those anchors, right? You're going to slam those anchors. <laughs> drop those anchors. I'm going to be dropping the anchors a lot. <laughs> Just follow the car in front of you. It'll be fine. Yeah. Let's hope they know how to drive. <laughs> They're not well, also Americans. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, hey, guys, let's jump into our old mail sack. Jumping into the mail sack. All right. Well, I'll start off with. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I got really excited about that. Was that a snort cat? It was a snort. Ooh, we got a snort out of cat. Wait, wait, wait. Cat, nice. cat, cat. Oh, no. It can hurt. <laughs> <laughs> get it? Because your love love so bad already. Do you get it? Tara, I want to <laughs> apologize for my comment earlier. It was insensitive. Sometimes I have to uh, learn that uh, just because something is funny doesn't mean I should say it. Mm. And I, Wait a minute. And I, what did I miss? I apologize. Was I gone? No, no. no. You were right it just there. happened. I mean, maybe it didn't happen. I don't know. Maybe it gets cut I don't know out. What <laughs> happens. No, no, I apologize. no. Won't I'm get sorry. cut out. You can't cut it out. Just Tara, I'm sorry because you insult. No. I'll make it up to you. I forgive you. How can I make it up to you? Uh, well, um, on the 21st of, <laughs> of June, <laughs> you can buy me a beer, cat. Deal. Do you want to ride from the airport? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. By the way, I got in yesterday to LAX and Tara said, can you just take the bus to the place near my house? Okay. Okay. There. We need to revisit the <laughs> fact that I to the was watching... Before, Cat sitting her cats. She did. There's like 50 cats. And, that's a lot. and I had taken her to the airport the week before after yeah, she had brought the cats to my house. And it <laughs> took a long time. And we were literally, literally, literally driving next, Chris Trigger, literally driving next to the flyaway shuttle bus right. from <laughs> Nice, which is literally one literally mile from my house. Close. And we followed the bus all the way down in traffic. <laughs> It was like, like there's the passing. <laughs> we just kept passing it. And then they got went ahead of us in the airport because then they get to go in the special bus lane. So they beat us. So, so I was like, fuck that. You're gonna it, take it that much, flyaway shuttle bus. It is much more efficient getting on the flyaway shuttle, I will say. <laughs> Although I missed the first one and stood at the do- closed door watching it drive away oh, and then had to wait for the next one. The and then the bus itself was. You know, in contact where she's sitting in the seat after she's gone up in that pod and it's like she's like shaking everywhere and she sees the compass go by and then she unstraps and she gets out and floats. Yes. Well, the bus was like in that seat before she gets out. And she's like, oh, ah. no. it was the bumpiest bus I've ever been on. Oh, no. Having said, I mean, it was, you know, the ride which is weird because it's that. a nice bus. And it's yeah, not it's like, like a old bus. It's like bus. a coach, like nice. Something. Like, maybe it's just the road. Yeah. But I remember all that. Yeah, I'm trying to look and I'm texting Tara, whatever. I'm like, and I'm hitting the wrong. <laughs> it was that bad. I'm trying to lift it up to where it's not touching a body part, and then it still wasn't were you up. in the mm. back? I feel like the back. No, it was like middle. Oh. Yeah. Mm. So it wasn't a full bus. So maybe, maybe there were enough people to like weight it down. <laughs> I don't know if that's but, a thing. Yeah, I don't know it if it is either. But <laughs> anyway, where were we? <clears throat> mail. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the mail sack. Because y'all said something weird that I didn't understand. I still don't. But I'll move on to mail. <laughs> Really, Wendy is listening to us. She's. <laughs> I do listen. Then there was something. And she insulted something. me. I made fun and of what Tara. she made. Sh- she wanted to make sure I heard it. Oh, okay. I waited Got for there to be a pause, and then I, 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 you know, brought attention. She drew me in. I brought attention to me. <laughs> to make sure I heard it, and I made fun of her, yeah. and I apologize. Yeah. It was not. Yeah, it was not nice. It was funny, oh, well. but not nice. Hey, as long as it's funny. As long as it's funny. Oh, okay. Well, here we go. This first mail kind of ties in what, what we were just talking about. From Beck. Hey, nerds. Hey, Beck. Hey, Beck. <laughs> Beck starts out by saying, <laughs> seven cats is so many cats to have in one house. It sounds like a dream and a nightmare all at once. <laughs> is there anything like my two? They will team up and take ownership of your house. You are severely outnumbered. True. Two of them are fosters. I've had them since they were babies. And I still have them until they're grownups, but whatever. Um, something strange has happened this past week. I've managed to find time to watch grown-up TV. It's been so good. Mm. Tara, have you watched Russian Doll Season 2 yet? It, it is you that likes it, right? Yes, it is. Okay. I have not still, watched it, though, yet. All right. Well, Beck says, still so good. This season jumped right into it. I got super excited when Annie Murphy popped up. Ooh, I love her. Fun. Oh, you do, too. She is unfairly beautiful at the best of times, but I <laughs> gotta really say is. that hair and those glasses really did it for me. Interesting. I was a little bummed that Nadia and Alan don't have a lot of screen time together, though. Kat, have you watched any of The Staircase? Do you know what that is? Yes, I have been. Is it a scary ghost? It or is. No, what is it? No ghost. We talked about it. It's based on a, a true life, uh, like oh, is that the murder true thing? crime story? Yeah. Oh, oh. Right. Oh, a, where they push you. Okay. There's a That's documentary right. about it on Netflix, okay. and then they made this movie. It's on HBO Max. It's, re- it's on a movie. It's a miniseries. It's really good. So they incorporate the documentary into the movie 
There's, mm. it's so good. It's so good. And Colin Firth is yeah. incredible. He, well, he, lo- you loot, like he, he becomes this guy. And because you've seen huh. the documentary, you, you can appreciate how he is turned into mm. this man. Uh, hmm. It's really good. I'll have to look into that. Uh, Beck says, I've watched the first three episodes and that's all that's out right now. Mm -hmm. There's something comforting in watching something when you already know exactly what's going to happen. I'm really enjoying it. I like how it has scenes shot directly out of the documentary. I don't like Colin Firth in this, though. (laughs) He played well. He plays gross too well and it makes me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But on the plus Mm -hmm. side, Tony Collette, I would watch her fold laundry. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. this next part of the email, I can only see part of it. So I'm going to scroll slowly because it's talking about Dr. Strange. So if I see anything spoilerly, I think you're okay. Have you already looked at it? Yeah, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Okay. I also had I also had my bro date to see Dr. Strange this week. We carpooled and took two cars. So I got to the guy's house and knocked on the door. He let me in for a bit because I was a little early. Thanks, anxiety. Anyway, he's a young guy. So he still lives with his parents. No shame in that. No, <laughs> uh, so when I walked into the living room, they were just there, just chilling on the couch. I was half expecting a shovel talk after five awkward minutes of small talk with them. We were on the road to get the next few guys when we all met up at the car park at the cinemas oh one of the boys from the other car shyly gave me flowers and a box oh, of chocolates because it was mother's so day sweet. how cute is these that these are some nice bros i know bros. when when we got inside and we're ordering our food and drinks the waiter said to me and who will be paying for that as if i was on a date this isn't the bachelorette it's not some kind of group date weirdo also i was dressed peak gay i had a hoodie under a flannel shirt under my denim jacket because it was cold yeah, that's a good, look. A good like look. Mm-hmm. my beanie and my rainbow volleys one of the guys had never seen me outside of work before and even said so you're like really gay, huh? <laughs> yeah, my, yeah, man, I am. Also, one of the guys fell asleep in the super comfy recliner. He paid fifty dollars for wow. a two-hour nap. Bucks. Yeah, wow. He had worked early that morning and isn't the hugest okay. superhero fan, but we all gave him so much shit. It was a good night. The movie, oh, Hold on. the movie was so damn good. Yeah. I loved every second of it. Okay. It definitely felt more like the Wanda show than a Doctor Strange movie, nice. though. I think this may be my favorite Marvel oh. movie now. I have so much to say for it, but I don't want to risk spoiling it for anyone. Go see mm. it. Thank you, back because we haven't seen it, but we'll soon. Uh, the streak of grown-up watching is officially over now. As I write this email, the TV is playing Coco Melon. If you don't <laughs> know what that is, you're lucky. <laughs> Love you guys. Beck. X-X. Thanks. Coco Thanks. Melon. Now I feel like I need to I look that up. I think it's a kid's show. I'm sure it is. And it sounds like it's probably <laughs> annoying. <laughs> All right. I got one from Hildy. Hildy says, hey, spelled H-E-I. <laughs> and goes on to say, I wrote hey, H-E-H-E-Y. Uh, but autocorrect always changes it back to the Norwegian way of spelling. So now I just go with it. <laughs> so, so we're learning a new word. Yeah, I like now that. We know. I like it. Listening to your Gentleman Jack recaps is just top-notch entertaining. I'm walking and laughing. It's a real struggle. It also makes me want to wa- watch or re-watch Vigil with Saran Jones. Mm. She is just great in that TV show, too. I recommend it if you're a crime fan. Mm. Yesterday, we saw Love Classified, and I have to say it's probably the best Hallmark film I have seen. The story felt more authentic in a Hallmarky way. It was just enjoyable to watch. And the mother's reaction, do not get a nurse... <laughs> My daughter's dating a doctor. <laughs> this is really funny. Uh, I wanted to recommend The Owl House to your Snot Pod parents listeners. It's a fun slash crazy animation show with queer representation that is entertaining for both young and old adventure nerds. It's on Disney+. Plus. Another thing on mm. Disney+. Plus. That's cool. Obi-Wan is right around the corner now. Can't wait to watch it. And all the more so. Listen to your recaps. Ah. Oh, we will have them. Keep on nerding. I will be listening, Hildy. Uh, and Hildy sent a picture. says, this is the fjord we live by. Mm. I'm The name of that. Hard- Hardinger Fjorden. <laughs> Hardigan Fjorden. Sounds yeah. right. <laughs> and the picture it's, is stunning. I mean, you know, it looks a lot like Banff. It, Banff. And, it does. You know, You're absolutely right. And Yeah. I mean, it's like lakes and very 
beautiful tall mountains My that reflect goodness. in the lakes. Oh, there's a goat Hil getting Hil milk. Hildy, stop coming for us, okay? A baby goat. <laughs> the baby goat's frolicking. Oh, my God. No, oh, there's another, now you're just showing The mountain lake. Bonds yeah. is Vodnet. Whatever that mountain yeah. lake is. <laughs> That's right. Bonds is Vodnet. And then about the lambs, it says, oh, we're bottle feeding a couple of the lambs. The mother doesn't have enough milk. She got, she had quadruplets. Congratulations. My goodness. Uh, yeah. So, Baby. so cool. So cute. Thank you, Hildy. Yeah, Hildy, thank you. Uh, Thanks for upsetting us. <laughs> with the beauty <laughs> that, of where uh, you live. Those snow capped, snow covered mountains and that water, that's <sighs> just, to me, that is paradise right there. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. Uh, hey, guys, I have an email from AK. All right. Hey. AK writes, Oh, hey, guys. Fancy seeing you here. Hey, okay. <laughs> you have only yourselves to blame for the following crime against poetry. Writing limericks is no skill of mine, whilst I manage to wrangle rhyme. For the bloody odometer in the shape of a pedometer, alas, it's j <laughs> it just feels asinine. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good. It's not bad. It's nice. <laughs> you didn't really read it in. like poetry slam style, which I feel like oh, a should, little bit of injustice. Try it again? Odometer, pedometer. Do yeah. it again, but dramatic. Okay. <clears throat> I like slam. I'm going to do slam poetry stuff. Yeah. Writing limericks is no skill of mine. Whilst I managed to wrangle rhyme for that odometer no, in the bloody shape odometer. of a podometer, mm -hmm. <laughs> alas, it just feels asinine. Oh, nice. Oh, we're right. <laughs> Snaps. Thank you. Snaps. Thank you very much. Wow. That is called Ode to AK. <laughs> oh, nice. I don't want to sound unclassy or whatever, but I feel like if I ever really went to a, like a live poetry reading, I would be one of those where like, like Tara and I'd be in the back and I would just start giggling oh, and not yeah. be able to control it. Something would set me off. 100%. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I appreciate the art. It looks freaking it, fun but... though. That look fun. It does look fun. Let's read all of our mail that way okay. now. Okay. Do it. Well, <laughs> go on, Kat. This is all you. Well, okay. AK continues. I'm not going to do that. Um, hearing you, <laughs> hearing you talk about dramatic letter reading made me think. This <gasps> this is a letter. Well, you uh -huh. receive quite mm -hmm. a lot of them these days. Oh, you no. have a YouTube channel. It seems mm -hmm. very clear to me that since you are so fond of a dramatic letter reading, you're well placed to demonstrate the form. Mm. Go on, go on. You know you want to. Admittedly, we're not generally sending les lesbid drama lesb dramatic declarations <laughs> of undying love and angsty guilt trips for rejecting us. I mean, so far, given what you've read out. Maybe you get those all the time, but don't read them out. <laughs> Who knows? So it'll be hard to act the full Anlister, but still, you could, be, you could do dramatic reading. I feel confident. Maybe some dodgy prosthetic eyebrows would help you get <laughs> into character. Mm. <clears throat> we'll think about it. We'll think about it. Surprise bonus mail sack episode. I love it when I find you guys in my trousers more than once a week. Mm -hmm. Glad you've managed to get some air to your sack. Oh, boy. Thanks, Jackie and Buster. Though I'm guessing Buster is broadly indifferent to wordplay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he enjoys words like rabbit. <clears throat> oh. oh. I'm sure he's a good boy. Oh, who's a good boy? We're not pushing you into bushes for sport. <laughs> okay, here's this fucking word again. Oh. <laughs> the tangential. Yay. Pretty good. Fiasco yeah. had me laughing so hard, a passing horse gave me a very disapproving look. Mm. I don't generally think of horses as snooty, but this one was being ridden by a serious seeming person. Maybe their attitude rubbed off. <laughs> Wow, way to upstage reality. Cheers, Tara or Wendy. <laughs> now, come on. <laughs> this is Tara. <clears throat> this is Tara. Come on, a peacock is still a surprisingly massive bird to find walking up the road directly towards you, especially if he's got his tail up, but it can't possibly compete with an ostrich. There was no ostrich. Upstaged by an imaginary ostrich. <laughs> I think that could be the title of my autobiography. <laughs> Right. That's... Is the tail up on a peacock like a mating sign? Like, I think so, right? He's coming for you. Mating. Right. The sound effect on the fake tail. Good, right? <laughs> that was. 
the hand motions really help that. <laughs> Uh, AK in conclusion says, right, that, mm. okay, this is the name of a, a flower, perhaps, Pieris, Pieri, Pieri, Pieri? Yes, it is some sort of a, a flowering plant. How does one pronounce that word? Let's find out. Pieris? Pieris? P-I-E-R-I-S. Not one Pieris? I feel like you want to go. Here we go. Pieris. 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 Do it again. There we go. Pieris. Pieris. It's a weird word. Yeah. That Pieris yeah. is looking miserable. The soil is all wrong for it. It's coming mm. out. AK. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, the AK. Last little flowery note. <laughs> Love it. End. Thanks, AK. <laughs> we have one more mail. Ooh. It's Bex again. Bex. <laughs> it's a Bex sandwich. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. Or Oreo or sandwich mm. or something. Mm. Uh, hey again, nerds. Hey again, hey back. back. Hey again, back. <laughs> Just popping back in to say that you guys gave me major flashbacks to my high school years when you were talking about changing in the year. <laughs> it made me remember awkwardly getting changed in a change room with a bunch of my classmates or even my friends at sleepovers and stuff. The golden rule was always look at the wall. I was always sweating bricks to make sure I didn't actually accidentally turn too early or see anyone. <laughs> I was so paranoid people. Oh, I uh, get this. Yeah. I was so paranoid people would find out if I was gay, if they caught me looking or being outed by someone who did know if I got caught looking. It was a very stressful and awkward time. Thanks for bringing that back to my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Love you. Back. It was kind of stressful, you know, in a locker room and kind of like, oh, yeah. even if you were looking, you didn't want someone to think, you know, they probably had no clue. But then in your mind, you're just assume everybody, you know. Right. That was yeah. Something. That whole I mean, I never like changed in in a room with people, you know, like some girls just in the, yeah, like in the locker room. There's always that one that would yeah. just run around naked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was really good just about like, no. changing, like putting, taking, you know, put on a shirt over it, take the shirt mm -hmm. off of it, pull it through the sleeve. Yes. I got really good at that kind of thing. Yeah, same. Or I just be like, you know what? I'm going to the bathroom anyway. I'm just going to go ahead and take my clothes in here. <laughs> go ahead and change. Yeah, might as yeah. well. Two birds. Right. Mm -hmm. I never got the whole let's shower in front of each other. No, that, no, no. Like that's no. as an adult, that's like the last thing I want to do. I don't. Yeah, that's understand. like. I don't understand. Even as a gay person, like I don't want to see. Like no. no, like that's not doing it for me. No, it's not <laughs> nothing. No, nope. No, like you just go shower. I'll see you later. Yeah, <laughs> we don't need to. We don't need to do this. No. <laughs> Huh. Well, uh, that's it for the old mail sack. This it's a week. tiny sack. We're leaving it on some it's awkward fun. lesbian uh, memories. <laughs> um, Good times. Let's, uh, let's talk to Nora Dominic again. She's a TV editor at BuzzFeed, and we have lots to discuss. Well, we are very excited to invite our next guest onto the snob. She's a TV editor at BuzzFeed and a self-described Marvel nerd. I don't know what we'll talk about. <laughs> It's Nora Dominic. Nora, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so yeah, just kind of if you know, scrolling through your Twitter feed, which is at Nora Dominic, it's really hard to find. Um, <laughs> so difficult. You could base you could basically be the fourth podcast of this host. Yeah, like, you, I love yeah. it. You, w Wendy made the joke that if you kind of put all of us in a blender, we yeah, get you. <laughs> <laughs> all of our interests, it. all of our passions <laughs> combined into one. I love it. That's you. <laughs> So how did you, let's do a little, we'll talk about you first and then we'll talk about some, some nerdy stuff. Um, how did you get your start at BuzzFeed? Um, I was just an intern um, out of college and I applied um, and I had, you know, just like trying to figure out what I wanted to do after college. Um, and so I just started as an intern there and then eventually worked my, they realized, as you can probably tell, I love TV and movies and everything. Um so shocking because I just never talk about it. Um, and um, yeah, eventually I was hired to their kind of TV and movies team, which was really great and covering all stuff from there. And then it evolved into like helping out with the celeb team um, and getting to, you know, interview and help out um, in that capacity, which is so fun. Um, and yeah, so I've been there almost five years now, which is wild. Um, but yeah. 
Awesome. Yeah. And then as far as your interests, do they kind of get to know what you like and say, okay, since you're watching these shows already, we're going to have you write about them. Or is it more like, hey, we need you to watch these shows so that we can have somebody writing or a mix of both? How is that? How is that doled out? It's, <laughs> it's mostly whatever you're interested in, write about it. So I'm mm-hmm. all over the place. Um, so <laughs> It's a combo of like, oh, you watch. It started out where I was just like, oh, you still watch Grey's Anatomy? I remember having this combo. <laughs> Grace <laughs> Sloan, yeah. as you can tell. <laughs> I remember just like being that, and like I was like, oh, can I write a post about like Grey's Anatomy? And they're like, yeah, like absolutely. Um, and so it started out with that, and then I was writing more of like kind of you know, throwback, like how I met your mother had ended and I was watching that and Grey's Anatomy, obviously like the OG seasons, like were so big. Um, And so I was writing a bunch of that stuff. And then I was like, oh, I kind of have this massive platform of Buzzfeed that they've given me. And I love all of these more niche shows as well, like Winona and Killing Eve. And One Day at a Time was really big. I wrote about that a lot. And I was like, oh, I have this massive platform. What if I do some of the more bread and butter BuzzFeed stuff, like writing about Grey's and writing about, you know, Stranger Things and those like bigger shows. But what if I take some of my time and really use the platform I have to kind of champion some of those smaller shows? Mm -hmm. Um, Hmm. So it's really just kind of a free for all, which is really fun for me because I'm able to, you know, spend a week writing about Marvel and then, you know, spend another week doing whatever. Um, So that's been really nice. And it's been nice to just kind of, get excited about a show and see if other people who read the site will also be excited about it. So it's a lot of fun. I feel like you have our dream mm-hmm. job. <laughs> <laughs> I like get to just watch stuff that you love yeah. and share your uh, opinions about it. it's kind of what we do here, but I feel like your platform's a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I just, I always joke. I'm like, I don't know how I happened into watching TV for a living, but like, that's uh, where I've ended up. So yeah, so nothing good. to complain about. <laughs> So I have a question here because I was just yeah. doing some Googling. So because we always we like to talk about lists on this show. Yes. <laughs> and in like, you know, do we agree? Do we not agree? So when someone comes up with a list, because I just found a list of yours from a couple years ago about people with chemistry on screen. Yes. So mm-hmm. did you just think, hey, here are a bunch of people I like. I want to make a list of my favorites. Is there a committee? <laughs> is there polling? How scientific is this? Or is this just like, you know what? Here's a list of things that I want to talk about, like ranking of the like people with chemistry on screen. Yeah. I'm going to make so, my list. So most of the time uh, you come up, I come up with an idea. So like I love talking about like actors having chemistry on screen. That's something I've written about a bunch. Um, and it's mm-hmm. something I love to talk about, like casting and everything like that. Um, So basically what we'll do is we'll, you know, ask the readers of BuzzFeed, like, hey, what are your favorite chemistry on screen? And then so I'm just compiling what everybody else. So like, if somebody really like, if one certain, you know, couple is mentioned like 10 times, I'm like, oh, that's a really (laughs) big one that everybody loves. Um, And when I write them, I like to balance it out where you have the like, obviously the Meredith and Derek's of the world and the ones people know. And then I like to balance it out with some, you know, niche shows where I'm like, oh, if somebody's reading this list, just thinking it's about general TV, maybe they'll happen upon, you know, a show I love that they haven't heard about and want to check it out. (laughs) Um, So it's kind of that. So you'll see some of mine, like, um, we'll always have the username for who, whichever, you know, BuzzFeed user contributed. But occasion- most of the time in mine, you'll see I have my own <laughs> name within because I'm like, oh, I need this person <laughs> in this list and no one gave it to me. Um, so I'll include it. So, yeah, it's a, like it's a nice way to, like, see what other people are talking about and reading and watching and then, you know, compiling it right. into a bigger list. Hmm. And then do you read the <laughs> comments on the list that that pop up? I sometimes, <laughs> I'm not a com- I'm not a comment reader. I just, uh, by nature, mm-hmm. not to say like comments on my posts are abnormally negative okay. all the time, <laughs> but <laughs> um, I just tend to not, a lot of times, like somebody I work with reads them a little more and they'll be like, oh, Nora, like the comments on your, this post are so sweet and so cute. And I'm like, you know, I just don't, <laughs> I don't read them. You're, it's um, probably smart. Yeah, just yeah. in general. You can but have the perfect <laughs> list or the perfect article, but someone out there. Is still someone out there is going to be annoyed. And I found that like, if somebody really <laughs> likes something I've written, 
a lot of times they'll like DM me on Twitter or DM me on Instagram. And it'll be more of a like, Hey, I just want to say like, I loved this, that. And so I tend, I tend to read those more as opposed to, you know, scrolling through the comments because there will be, there are, and I always make sure at the bottom of my list to be like, we can't fit everyone. Like yeah. it's no, it's not personal. Right. Right. I like literally can't fit everybody. Yeah. I literally, I can't fit here all day. Like every list is um, a thousand things. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I can't sit here all day. So let me know who else should be included. Right. And maybe I'll do another one down the line. Um, right. so yeah. 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 Cause it, it is, it's like it, yeah, you can't please everybody. Uh, but the, it's part of the fun is when you see the list kind of being part of it and saying, oh, well, that no, I disagree, even if it's not yes. something mean. But, you know, uh, so it's yeah. part of the fun. And it is a lot of the the list, especially on BuzzFeed is, you know, like, oh, well, that's the third time I've seen that pop up in a list. I have no idea what that show is, but maybe I should yeah. look into it, especially a lot of the qu- the queer lists that include like queer characters. Absolutely. It's like, oh, I didn't even know this many were out there. Maybe I should look into that. So it's a really good way to to raise awareness of shows. Yeah, absolutely. So do your friends that you spend time with, do they, like when we get together, we kind of talk about the same stuff we do on the things we do on the podcast. Yeah. But do they share your love of, t- sorry, Mitt, <laughs> um, <laughs> TV, film, the whole thing? Or are they like, Nora, can we just talk about <laughs> dishes and kitchen remodeling yeah. or, or, or did they, yeah, they oh. like to talk about politics, this with yeah. politics uh all of my friends are big into tv and movies and i um so i went to emerson college i went to school for film so inherently we were all film and tv kids um and i did theater in high school so again it was like broadway and like still in the same vein and then Um, Yeah, now, obviously, like all my friends I've made at BuzzFeed, we're all into that kind of thing. And then I've made friends through, you know, different fandoms and, you know, high school friends. We all really have have had the same interests. It'll be more so like a, okay, Nora, like, calm down. (laughs) Like, I have, like, it'll be especially with Marvel stuff, it'll be like, I'll, I'm like really trying to like get my friends to be into it. I'm like, you haven't seen this movie yet. Can we like hurry the process along? Um, so I can talk about it. Uh, but most of the time it's yeah. TV movies. It's basically what you would assume. Like we're all chatting about the same stuff. Well, we all met because we were Xena fans. So we, and, and now, and we share some, uh, you know, the same interests now for the most part. So oh, yeah. yeah. It never stop. Well, then let's, no. I think we should just jump. Should we jump into sure. some chatting about some uh, TV stuff? Yeah. Killing Eve. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the finale was a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. We're still talking about it. Yeah. It still comes up a lot. Um, it sounds like you were, uh, you had watched, obviously, you've, you'd watched the whole s- series. Yeah. What are your thoughts about the finale? <laughs> <sighs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm heartbroken. I think it was like a, I'm a heartbroken is the only way I can describe it because mm. um, I consider Killing Eve one of my favorite shows of all time. And I've said it for a very long time. It's one of my favorites. I mean, I happened on it because I loved Sandra on Grey's <laughs> and I was like, oh, she's in this new show. I've got to watch it. Um, and I was like, it's like, you know, it's like, oh, it's on BBC America. I loved Orphan Black. Let's watch this. And it's like that stream of watching it. And then obviously like fell head over heels for Jodie Comer and her acting and everything. Mm. So I think that's what was really hard about the finale was like, you'd been on this journey for so long and not to say every show needs an absolutely perfect happy ending. Um, And I don't think Killing Eve needed a very perfect happy ending. I think everything was just crammed into that Mm -hmm. last episode. So it all happened very fast. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was kind of like a whiplash almost of, you're getting this happiness and then, you know, two minutes before, you know, the credits roll on your favorite show and it just kind of, you know, it ends in that way. They raise you up like, so oh. high and then it all comes <laughs> crumbling down. I was like on the, I was on the peak of the mountain right. and then just really tripped down it. Um, so yeah, I like, there's moments from the finale. Obviously I love, like, I love the Eve and Villanelle stuff and it's the bread and butter of what made killing Eve so good was having those two actors in a room and getting to do what Mm -hmm. they had to do. Um, But yeah, I really, it was more of a, like a, Oh, and now the credits are rolling like right at the end. And I'm just like, now I'm sitting there for like two hours, like trying to contemplate what happened. (laughs) Were you surprised? Did you get any forewarning that 
what was going to happen. I, I not even looking on Twitter. I saw a post that wasn't even didn't even have killing even the title anywhere. It was just mm. something that said enough to where I knew what was coming. So, so uh, the nature of my job, I get screeners. So I had actually okay. seen the finale about a week and a half before it aired um, mm. because I was interviewing, you know, people behind the scenes of the show um, for my job. And so I had seen it like a week and a half out. And I remember going to work, like having a check in <laughs> at work with somebody. And I was like, oh, I watched the Killing Me finale last night. And they were like, oh, like, <laughs> how was it? And I was like, I think, I think people are going to be mad. I li- mm-hmm. remember saying it. Um, I was like, I think people might be mad. Um, and, you know, like people at work were like, right, really? Whatever. And I was like, just being so in tune to that side of TV. I was like, I have this inherent feeling. I was like, I think they'll love the moments that are great, but then they'll hate the moments that are not. <laughs> <laughs> so very much so I had no like I went in completely blind because I was obviously a week and a half before everybody right. I hadn't seen anything on Twitter because uh, I know like it was spoiled I mean you couldn't go on Twitter that day without seeing even if it didn't have their names like you could probably infer what show they were talking about and what was happening mm-hmm. um so yeah I went in completely blind um sitting by myself and then I had a week and a half by myself being like oh and now everybody's gonna <laughs> want to talk about it yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah i feel like this season because i watched it as it went and um Mm. i i liked a lot about the last season but especially when you see where they ended up going and like you said the ending the finale felt really cramped i remember Mm -hmm. like eight minutes left in the episode and they're just still heading towards the 12 i'm like yeah they've been pursuing this all season and they're saving this final confrontation for like less than 10 minutes left in the finale it's like what is what is how are they going to fit this in? But it felt like this whole season, there was a very concentrated effort to keep them at odds. Like I, you, I would have yeah. loved to seen the way the season three ended them and some, even if it wasn't always perfect this season, them pursuing the 12 together, or at least on the same side where you got to see a little bit more of them doing what they do together and being on the same sort of team. Mm-hmm. And, um, but it's just mm-hmm. like either he was mad at Villanelle for something. Then Villanelle mm-hmm. was mad at Eve for something. And yep. then she goes off to the island with that other chick for like no discernible <laughs> reason. And Eve has to come rescue her. I'm like, you could have just had them together instead of just coming up with ways to keep them apart. And then it just made it harder. Like you said, when they finally had happiness for at least a minute. And then for at least yep. one minute. Think- that's all you get. Well, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two minutes. Yeah, two Maybe minutes. Two. I'll give them two. Yeah. I'll give them two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> So why, and you said it, Nora, it, the bread and butter of that show was these two characters together in the same room. Yeah. Why do you think they, as Wendy has kind of you know laid out for us, why did they work so hard against them being together in this last season? I think the moments of killing Eve, like even when you go back to season one, like that cat and mouse game was so electric in those early seasons. Um, so I understand from a writing perspective of them being like, we want to keep that. Um, we want to keep that cat and mouse game. But I think once you hit this last season, we'd done all of that. We'd yeah. already done that. And so I think it was almost thinking too much about that and not thinking about like, well, maybe we could have a whole season where Jody and Sandra are just together the whole time. Maybe that could work. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you could have started the season off exactly how they started it, where we had that bit of a time jump and we're like, wait, we just saw them on the bridge together, right. but now they don't like each other. Mm-hmm. Right. That was and very confusing. Yeah. And you're playing catch up. Like I got yeah. that as a, just a trick of, you know, writing mm-hmm. for TV. Um, mm-hmm. But then it was like, now Villanelle's in jail, but now they're not together. Now she's shot and now I'm going to save her, but now we're not together again. Mm-hmm. Now we're together, but the show is now ending. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. it's like. And now yeah, one's so dead. I, yeah. yeah. And now one's dead and now they're forever not mm-hmm. together. So great. Um, so I think. Yeah, I think I think that's what made it harder that they don't end up together all the way at the end, too, is we spent a whole season of them not really being together. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they got together and now they're not together again. I wonder <laughs> how, I wonder if it would have felt like the nature of her dying would still have been awful, but I wonder if it would have mm-hmm. felt different of it's like, well, we had seven full episodes of them trying to live their best lives together and help each other. Mm-hmm. And now they're gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like I would have even, all, I, I, although I didn't hate the twist of like, it was Carolyn. I, I, yeah, I love I like Phil and Ellen and Carolyn yeah. together. They were great. And then mm-hmm. just the fact that Carolyn, for her, it's like, look, 
you have to do, you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. But just, I think just the whole last second of it, or even if Villanelle had gone out herself, taken on the yeah. 12, well, Eve, for whatever reason, was just dancing it up at the wedding yeah. after party. I'm like, not concerned <laughs> about Villanelle taking on the 12 alone. It's like, she did the ceremony. Okay, distract him. I don't know what the wedding party was going to do if, yeah. you right. know, they didn't even know this was happening. They weren't undercover kind of agents like, or something. Ceremony's yeah, done. Yeah, they had no clue. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go find Villanelle. I'm just going to like, woo, yeah. have a good time. And I feel like that whole thing was just like to show the contrast of Eve and Villanelle killing the 12. But like, we like, get it no by sense. that point. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> we Eve's understand. whole quest had been herself also to take out the 12. Right. Instead, she's like, all right, take care of it, Villanelle. I'm going right. to hang out with these people I don't know and dance. But, I know I did love the Carolyn. That was the gut punch too, the Carolyn right. twist. Mm-hmm. Which that made mm-hmm. sense to me. Like to me, that yeah. was like yeah. I get it. Carolyn would totally do that as much like, as she I lo- likes Villanelle. I love it. Wasn't mm-hmm. a surprise, right? I like, think. Oh yeah, that makes sense. That was like I think that was like the best piece of storytelling in that was right. the Carolyn mm-hmm. gut punch because they just had the moment in the bar together, like you know, oh, where yeah. they're like best friends hamming it up, and so that was like, oh oh my god. But mm-hmm. I think it, I really think it was a combination, like you said, of they crammed so much mm-hmm. in the last like 10 minutes, like everything that happened in those 10 minutes could have been a whole episode. Oh, mm-hmm. easy. So, yeah. yeah. Well, this, OK, one quite more question about that. Yeah. So or at least for me. But so when something like this happens, you said Killing Eve is one of your favorite shows. Mm-hmm. Does the end cause you because a lot of people are now like it seems like the ending doesn't go the way that they wanted and and it ends badly. And then all of a sudden, it's almost like the whole show is just like, oh, just almost tossed aside. But does that diminish mm-hmm. your love of the show? Or do you just like, you know what? I'm going to pause it when they're hugging on the boat. And that's my <laughs> ending. And I still love everything else <laughs> as much as I ever did. Just cut out the last two minutes. I, ob- I obviously wrote about the ending. Um, yeah. And one of the editors who edited my post was laughing because the final image in my post is them hugging. And I cut to the image <laughs> of it just saying the end. <laughs> yeah. like, this is how it, I was like, that's how it ended in my mind. Um, usually when a show doesn't end, I wasn't at, like, I watched Game of Thrones, um, but I wouldn't consider myself like a dying Game of Thrones fan. Mm-hmm. Um, so for that, it's like it ended. And I was like, you know, maybe I'll rewatch it down the line, but whatever. It's over. I lived it. Um, I think How I Met Your Mother, I loved that show. And that ending, I I was like, oh my God, like how, like it's considered one of the literal yeah. worst endings on TV. <laughs> and I, it took me a very long time to rewatch that show. Um, yeah, I still have it, year, but now, yeah. Yeah. But it was so good up it, until then. Yeah. It was, it was so good. <laughs> and like, not to say that show is perfect and it definitely mm-hmm. has not aged well. No. In places. <laughs> <laughs> like not at all um but i loved like i loved some of those i loved robin like i loved lily and marshall like there are moments of that show that were so good and literally this year was the first time i really sat down and like rewatched a whole season mm. and was like i can do this so i think for killing eve like i always like to take a break after a show ends i'm like i'm not going to jump right into a rewatch like it just ended mm-hmm. um but i think i would rewatch it and i had done rewatches of the earlier seasons in the past like between seasons two and three and then three and four um, but I think it definitely sours watching that final season. Mm-hmm. I don't think it will sour the first couple, um, because they mm-hmm. were so good. Um, but I think it will, it will like, if I'm ever rewatching those first like three or four episodes and be like, Oh, remember the end though? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> know where we're headed? Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about a show that had a, a good, I don't want to say finale. Uh, it was a season four finale. Yeah. <laughs> but let's just let's just pretend for a moment we live in a world where season four, episode twelve, was it twelve? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Well. Of Winona Earp is the last television version of this yeah. show that we ever get. Let's just pretend it's some weird bizarro <laughs> world. Yep. How do you think they handled that finale? I loved it. Mm-hmm. Again, that was another one where I had gotten the screeners. And I had watched that finale like a month before. Oh, no. Like it was. Oh, like, that's <laughs> and I, my friends always laugh because they're like, "How do you do it? Just like, how are you sitting there? Like, be- like beginning of this month, like in my brain, I was living in multiverse of madness before it dropped. Like, I'm living in Stranger wow. Things. Like, I'm living like Hacks, the flight attendant. It was like May was so packed, and I was watching these screeners beforehand. 
and I'm sitting here like alone with my thoughts. <laughs> and so what, you live yeah. in the future. Yeah, I'm living in the future. And then I'm rewatching it with everybody to be like, I want to join. Right. Like, I want to. I want to be Fun. around. Um. So Winona was one where I had watched it really far in advance. Um, because I was interviewing, you know, the cast and everything. Um, mm. before you know it ended. I love. I loved it. I think if in this bizarro world that's all we ever see of those characters i'm like very content like i love where they ended um i love again like love a happy ending <laughs> like <laughs> i was crying but it was like happy crying tears like <laughs> i'm right. like, weeping not because like i'm devastated um, <laughs> it's, re- it's refreshing <laughs> a happy tears yeah, it was, you know yeah, right it was kind of nice um so yeah, I loved it. Um, I actually have not rewatched it though since watching it live with everybody when it mm-hmm. aired. I just like I haven't been able to like go back. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did love it. I love where everybody ended up. Obviously, I think some those are some of the like best performances on that mm-hmm. show as well. Which is sad because I feel like not to say like Melanie and Tim and Kat and Dom didn't weren't like they gave great performances before, but it was like, they were finally so in tune to the, their characters um, mm. that those final performances are just like some of my favorite. Now getting the screeners, did you get a screener copy of season four, episode two with the stairs? <laughs> I did. <laughs> that, what were your I thoughts? <laughs> I think for why Nona was always fun because I always liked playfully teasing everyone because I had watched it beforehand and I, and I was like, oh, this episode's coming up and like, you guys have no idea what's coming. And I think I was like, my review, I was like my tease for 402 and it was just like the keyboard smash. Like that's all I like put. Nice. And everybody was like, oh God, like what the heck is coming? I remember watching that and just being like, I, not stunned. I think it was more, I, it's also interesting because it's like, um, for my, like I've met Kat and Dom in like a professional like Mm -hmm. i'm interviewing them and we're hanging out setting and then it's funny when you like are then watching the show and you're like oh my god like hello (laughs) but yeah i did get 402 i did watch it beforehand i think it was i'm still like like what they were able to do with that was like so big for just tv in general you know right um i don't yeah i don't think we we hadn't really seen a scene like that in general um and i think they had and they handled it with such like care and like I think mm-hmm. like Cat and Dom felt very great doing it on set and I think it was just a it was a great thing I think they were able to give everybody that's what was kind of nice about season four was like not that they were going in thinking that was the end but they really made sure to hit every beat um in case it ended up mm-hmm. being um so I think it worked really well and do you can cons- it is yeah. iconic like I think the legacy of that show if in a hundred years uh there, people are talking about that show. I think it will be because of not just that episode, but the that way hot relationship and how absolutely grounded it felt. Even though there was a middle in the middle of this show, like batshit crazy shit show, <laughs> is that that portrayal between those two women? But yeah, I think that's that would be. I think that's what the legacy right. of that show. And it, be. even talking about oh sorry, even talking about killing Eve, like uh, like writing up like why people were so mad about that, like the examples I pulled, like I pulled the Lexa example, obviously of like, we've gotten past this, but now we've now jumped back to it. Um, And then like, I pulled the bulletproof vest scene from season one of Winona as just an example of like, here's what you can do. And like talking about not reading the comments, really, I did scroll to the comments on that post and it was like, oh my God, like, what's that show? Like, there's, <laughs> yeah. like, I always end up putting, I always put screenshots from shows I personally love, hoping that maybe that is like, oh, wait, Killing Eve did this, but what's that show that's doing that? I want to know what that mm-hmm. is. Um, so yeah, I definitely think the legacy of those two will be, you know, heralded as like, what to do mm-hmm. and like how you do mm-hmm. that in a in a very not grounded show, but they were still, you know, very much tangible and real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then at what point did you become an Erper? Were you watching from the start or did you get into it a little bit later? Uh, so I came in watching live for season two. Season two. Mm-hmm. Um, I came in watching it for that. Um, but I wasn't really like, I wasn't really live tweeting. I was kind of watching it at my own pace. I wasn't watching it live. Um, and then I remember 
when I think it was between two and three, they went to Comic-Con. And I remember there was this whole discussion about rebooting Buffy. And everybody was mm-hmm. like, they want to reboot Buffy. And I remember Josh from Sci-Fi was like, reboot Buffy. There's already a reboot <laughs> of Buffy. And it's called Winona Earp. And you should be watching this. And I mm-hmm. saw that tweet. And it was getting a lot of traction. Not just like within the Erper community. But other people were seeing it. And I remember bringing it into work and being like, can I write a post about Winona Earp? And I was like, I don't know how like well it would do in the grand scheme of everything, but I really want to write this and frame it as a, we don't need a Buffy reboot. This show you should be watching. Um, and so that's when I really, you know, I was like, oh, I can talk about this show using this platform and hopefully reach people that are watching the show or get people to watch it. Um, so that was probably, that was between two and three. Um, when I was really like, oh, I can, you know, tweet about it and like get other people to watch. I don't need to be watching this alone. Like there's other people that watch the show too. Mm-hmm. So w- let's talk about, um, we'll go back and talk about sort of how did like Winona showed writers and producers how to portray, mm-hmm. how you could portray a lesbian or, or uh, same sex or queer couple, however you want to say. And then look at Villanelle and um, Eve and how kind of people feel that's not how you handle mm-hmm that kind of relationship. And I know that you're not a showrunner, you're not a writer, but how do you think as someone who is creating the story, how, how, you know, it's not fair to say that if you're a queer character, you have, you, you're, 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 you know, uh, you have plot armor, mm-hmm. right? Like that's not fair. Like there are some stories where that does make sense for a character. So how do you, I mean, how do you think that's such a hard, those are hard waters to navigate. How, how, I mean, can you kind of, cause you read so much about these shows. Can you tell, can you like, what advice would you give to a showrunner? Like, how do you, how do you figure out how to handle that stuff? It's so interesting because as somebody that like, can, like watches so much TV, like I never, like there's a really for a showrunner and a writer, like I can imagine there's such a fine line of like fan service versus let's continue the story we want to tell. And I just always think about sometimes like, sometimes your plan, I blow, like you got to change it. Like there's just certain mm-hmm. things that like, I, I always think about how I met your mother, right? Like where they had to film that ending years before because the kids were going to be too old. So they've had to film the ending of, you know, Robin and Ted, and they could never in their wildest dreams have thought of, you know, Neil and Kobe having this insane chemistry that fans loved. Mm -hmm. Um, And so they were able to give that to you, but then they had to abandon ship and be like, well, we got to break them up because we already have our ending. Um, And so that's on one hand, like everybody's mad because you've given us what we wanted and now you took it away. And I Mm -hmm. think there's just a way to, it's very difficult. I'm assuming of riding that line of like, okay, Villanelle and Eve are such a great and strong couple but we have this other plan where they're not together most of the time. Um, but the chemistry between Sandra and Jody is so electric that we've got to lean into it a lot. And I think certain seasons you can tell they were really like, well, they can be apart, but then we've got to get them back. Like I think about the bus moment and I think uh, about like, yeah, I think about the bus. The moment. <laughs> yeah. And it came at such a great point where it was uh-huh. like, they've been away, but now they got to get back and they've got to see each other for the first time. And then they can depart you know, they can part again, but we know they're going to end up back together, you know, on the bridge, the fault, you know, whatever. Um, So I think it's hard. And I can't imagine how you have all of these other opinions coming at you and trying to, you know, throw that into a show. Um, But I definitely think, you know, at some point, it's like, well, the fans want this, maybe we should try it, you know, and see how it goes and figure it out. Um, And I always think those are some of uh, like my favorite, you know, shows. It's like, I think like Dickinson is one of my favorite examples Mm -hmm. of, you know, how to tell one of those stories. Um, And I think uh, they were just able to really thread that relationship where they weren't together the whole time, but Mm -hmm. they were hitting the beats where then they got together and it was great. And, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you were able to give the fans kind of what they want. Um, So I think it's, it's hard. And I can't even imagine like, when you're sitting there and like, cause I think about like TV chemistry and casting all the time. Like, so 
sometimes you just don't know, like when you cast somebody and it's like, oh my God, their chemistry is wild. <laughs> like we've got to do something about this. And I don't think it's ever a good thing to be like, we can't do anything about this. Like, this is weird. Um, we're just going to ignore it. Um, <laughs> Um, and, but, uh, I love when they kind of are able to lean into it and change the plan a little bit. Um, well, that's always like fun. You never, you never in TV hear people say, wow, these ha- actors have great chemistry and they've got this great thing, but I kind of wish they'd stuck to the original plan. Right. To, they know you <laughs> never. never hear that. It's always like these actors have great chemistry. They should have let them continue. And it's like you yeah. said, sometimes I think story and I think with Killing Eve, too, they weren't helped. And they have a different showrunner, like, every year. Mm-hmm. So you had no yeah. grand plan. And even I read that even at the beginning of the last season, they were like, should we kill one? Should we kill both? Should mm-hmm. we give them both alive? And they were kind of like, well, it's bigger stakes if she dies. Well, which, again, she's in the line of work. It's not like, I don't think she <laughs> yeah. and Eve are ever going to go live happily ever after in a little home. No. You could have still killed her, and I feel like just done a better job of mm-hmm. it. But, you know, there's, you know, but a lot of times with these shows, they're so locked in, like with How I Met Your Mother, like, here's how, here's our ending. We're going to end it yeah. like this. And sometimes things change along the way, especially when mm-hmm. a show runs for a long time. Absolutely. Where maybe you should think, wow, this doesn't really fit the show that this is morphed into. Mm-hmm. But I always think of Supernatural, too, where like the season five finale, like that was the finale they conceived. Mm-hmm. Like that was it mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. And then they just happened to keep on going. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, for <laughs> yeah, forever. So like I watched it until season five and then I was like, well, that's the end they wanted. So I don't know mm. what's going to happen after. <laughs> and I remember peeking in obviously on the series finale well, like a, two years ago at this point. And like, I know fans of that show were annoyed too about what ended up mm. happening and what they didn't do. And, you know, I was never really in that fandom or watched it that religiously, but I could see like, them being like, okay, you had your ending, and then you continued. I get nervous about Grey's Anatomy too. Like this oh, is another God, one. Oh God, no, we're gonna get. Oh yeah. <laughs> I get nervous that that's what's gonna happen with that too. Um, mm. and it's just the yeah, the plans change. TV's a very and again, I think that great example is this past week, like the CW, which is like cutting oh, every everything. show, everything, oh, yeah. and it's like you can either live forever or suddenly you're gone. Mm-hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to plan unless you're like immediately given that two season plan or three seasons. But even then you have no idea. Um, So I think it's very hard. And to your point, like Killing Eve, I loved that they had a different female showrunner each season. I loved that they were able to give Phoebe her chance and then like Emerald her chance. And it was so great to see that. But then it's also hard to keep that through line going as far as you have to go. Yeah, on paper that's a great thing to have, yeah. uh, you know, give opportunities to to mm-hmm. female showrunners, but they didn't they weren't on the same page yeah. clearly. Yeah. And uh quickly like talking about kind of having an ending and then going back and you know c- kind of contributing more to the show, X-Files. Uh, mm-hmm. you're probably you're probably too young for that one. <laughs> X-Files. Listen. Um <laughs> well, <laughs> Well, you know, Wendy and I are, are are big X-Files fans and how many seasons? Originally was it 10 or 11 seasons? I think it seasons? was 9. Yeah, and then the, original, the original run I think was nine, and then but that was a show too that you had this, like probably the the biggest like through line of that story was Mulder and his sister and like what mm-hmm. happened to her, and it was a show again they were just gonna make them till the network said stop making them and Absolutely. it was huge so at some point they just. St- it felt like they were just making stuff up as, as, as they went along. Yeah. And then, it wasn't like, based in well, reality anymore. Oh. Well, hey, I don't care about reality as long as it's good. Listen. But Listen. They just kept pulling things out. Like I felt like you had no real cohesive idea of what was mm-hmm. happening with any of it. No. I, I, as far as like conspiracy. And then like he randomly found out what happened to his sister at some like couple two-parter episode in the middle of a season. And then they just kept going. You could have like this big emotional. Yeah plan for this ending but it's like well we don't know how long we're going and we let's wrap this up and just keep making more things up and then the the original finale was just like horrible and then they kept yeah. they came back and, and it, <laughs> i was and gonna say just, they came back and did yeah. a couple didn't they a couple two, seasons two, two seasons two? And, yeah. and it got to where chris carter when you saw his name on an episode you're like oh great oh. this is gonna be a <laughs> convoluted mess and but i would have loved to have seen him come back with with new writers director you know just a new voice well, to the x-files but and you'd think that there was a new showrunner every season on that show, but there wasn't. Yeah, and same guy. Chris Carter didn't have a plan. He apparently these these two re- rebooted seasons, he didn't have a writers' room. It was like 
here's a script, go write it. Here's a script. Like, I feel like they needed sort of a group in that room to say like, well, maybe we don't do that. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's, it, it so yeah, they come back for two seasons yeah. and reboot. And what became kind of the core of the episode, of the season, of the whole show was Mulder and Scully. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, talk about chemistry yeah. you didn't see coming. These two just, icon- I mean, for me, very iconic. And, and uh, that partnership is, you know, one of my favorite parts of that show. And then you come at the very end and you completely crap all over yep. the Dana Scully arc because of, of uh, just like, he, what were you thinking? You know, like that he, I feel like he didn't do those characters service. Yeah. Uh, and now like, yeah, I'm not going to, I don't think I've gone back to rewatch any of that. Those two reboots uh, seasons. And I don't, I don't have any interest in doing that. I, I like, I never like to see shows go. Like I get it so attached to them and then I'm like sad when they're over and I'm like, it's something I always will miss, but I always, always appreciate like Shit's Creek. Mm-hmm. They had the plan mm-hmm. and they stuck yep. to it. They could have literally kept going yeah. for oh, yeah. four more seasons. <laughs> we could have been sitting here right now watching more Shit's Creek. But Dan <laughs> had that plan and he was like, you know, we're very popular now, mm-hmm. but I still want to end it. Like it's still, mm-hmm. I don't want to overstay my welcome. Mm-hmm. And I just, yeah. Dickinson was kind of the same mm-hmm. way too, where it's like, we've, you know, three seasons are, you know, everybody loves us, but let's end while we're loved. And I think there's always something, you know, very, very nice about it as much as I'm like, oh no, keep going. Yeah. I think it's like, it's nice when they see their plan and they know like, this is it. Like we can't keep going. It'll get too convoluted mm-hmm. or we'll run out of storylines mm-hmm. or we're just, you know, I think it's always like you're now doing things to your characters because you need, it's a show and you need conflict. So it's like, oh, we're going to break up these people because we've got to. And then they can't be happy the whole time. Um, that would <laughs> be bizarre. Fun. That's not fun. Don't <laughs> yeah. want to watch that. Um, so I always, think, I always think about that too, yeah. where I'm just like, at some point I'm like, just end it yeah. how yeah. you want to. And I, I will get over it. So speaking of a show that's been on a long time and some feel too long, myself not included, <laughs> is a little no. show, a little show <laughs> called Grey's Anatomy. Ah, that one. Yeah. Uh, Very niche. You know, might not have heard it. No one knows about it. (laughs) It's been on for 18 years. Cult favorite. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Cult hit. Uh, (laughs) And and I know that, you know, you watch some Grey's, so I'm just interested. Speaking of Sandra O, you know, you know, what are your predictions for the season for how they might Mm -hmm. end it? Do you think Sandra might ever come back for, you know, a little cameo? Uh, and what are your thoughts on the current season? And, you know, all like talk about kind of feeling some feel like going off the rails and doing all, all these things to your character. I mean, they're on season 18. Ev- every possible. Well, I won't say every possible. We've done everything, everything <laughs> yeah. imaginable so far has happened to these characters. Yeah. They've been attacked by every kind of animal, suffered every kind yes. of crash there can possibly be. Um, <laughs> so, you know, where do you think and then what what would be a satisfying ending for you? I think I said it, I think I tweeted it a little while ago, but my ideal Grey's Anatomy ending is we get to the point where Zola is now an intern at Grey's oh, and that's yes. how it ends. Oh, like that's what I, I was just I was thinking that the other day, yeah. the, that one how episode. How old is Zola? How many years does that have to run for that but to like, happen? I think how old I, is Zola? There'd have to be a time jump. Okay. okay. And it would just like, it would end with like, it's literally the first episode of Meredith getting to oh. Seattle Grace, but it's her. And Zola's interested and in medicine. Rick- oh, so yes, good. and instead of and instead of you, we've heard it here. If it happens, and yeah. Instead of instead of Market. instead of Richard giving the speech, it's Meredith. Oh. And it's just oh. it's that passing of the baton and just that. Like I don't need <laughs> Meredith to die. Like we don't nope. need that to happen. No. Um, like we can let but wolves. <laughs> but wolves, that's the one animal. No, we had wolves. <laughs> Um, wolves had had yeah, have had I, their time on Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, there was that plane crash that one time. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. Aaron never I, lets us forget about that. Plane crash. <laughs> <laughs> I'll literally never forget it. No, <laughs> no. And and um, then do you think Sandra O oh will be on at some point? In my wildest of dreams, I want her to so mm-hmm. badly. I don't know. I think it's also that kind of thing where it's Sandra's like. You know, I'm like seven, eight years removed now at this point. Right. Like, 
I've moved on. Yeah, I've done. Nora. Yeah, I know. Nora. And That's what I'm I mean, saying. they're bringing Show some the folks money. back. Yeah. I, you know, I'm just hoping as time goes I, by, she starts to feel more nostalgic for it rather than like get me absolutely. away from it. Yeah. I I would think when that show eventually ends, and I would think they want to at this point push Ellen Pompeo to make it to season 20, mm-hmm. right? We're on eight. Mm-hmm. We're finishing 18 right now. They were renewed for 19. Mm-hmm. There was no like renewed for the final season. It was just renewed for another season. Um, mm. In my mind as a, you know, if I'm thinking of as an ABC executive, if I'm thinking of the legacy of this show, I think you want to try to push that to 20 because it's huge. And you want to up front be like the final season of Grey's Anatomy. Mm-hmm. I personally, unless something completely goes awry, I cannot imagine like, we're sitting here in February of next year and they're all of a sudden like, okay, it's the end. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I can't imagine that. I think they would want to give it a proper. It's send-off. pretty much up to Ellen though. Right. Isn't it kind of, at I this assume, point, it's up to her how long she yeah. wants to go. I would I know. Back up the truck. However, <laughs> man, how much money would do you, you want? Right. Nora watch a spinoff with Joe? Ooh, Is there another character you, know, you would watch a spinoff of? Oh, Oh, you know, I think I would watch a Joe spinoff. I love her now. Me too. I, think they've, I love her now. I think <laughs> it was so bizarre. I was talking to somebody recently and I was like, isn't it weird to think that Joe has been on this show longer than George ever was? Yes, it's like so longer bizarre. Than, <laughs> isn't that biz- like to think about she's been on this show longer than some of the like Grey's Anatomy characters everybody talks about? She's so important to the show and I have loved what they've done with her and where they've taken her and the storylines they've given her. I would like, I love station 19. Like I love the spinoffs into the more of the Seattle world. And I think that's where private practice was a favorite of mine. Mm -hmm. I've loved that. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think they could, I I mean, listen, they could do a Zola spinoff years from now. And and we just keep the grace slow. It could, that show could keep going for as long, I yeah. think, as long as they want it. I don't think there's mm. people. I talk, I do every week at work. I do like TV moments of the week. And it's like the best TV mm. moments that have happened. And consistently without fail, whenever Grey's Anatomy is included, it's always the best one. Like everybody mm. loves it. Because whether you watch the show when it was, uh, you know, the beginning and you don't watch it anymore or you're still watching it you still want to know what's happening because you want to be part of that conversation. Um, so I just always think there's fans of that show that'll keep, keep going. And I really do think it's up to Ellen and I don't think they would continue without her. I don't think I don't personally, because I think about last season when they did the COVID storyline and those were some of my least favorite episodes without her. Like right. I realized then that this show doesn't work without Meredith. Right. Uh, like I didn't not to say like Meredith's never been like my fa- like my favorite character was Lexi like that was oh, she was always rest my in favorite peace. <laughs> rest in peace uh, um so I never considered Meredith like my favorite character on that show um like obviously I love her but not my favorite and last season when they were doing the COVID storyline and there were full episodes where Ellen just was not there I really mm. was feeling like, oh, this show doesn't work without mm-hmm. her. Like, it really doesn't. And I think it was kind of Ellen showcasing that this show doesn't work without yeah. me. Yeah. And in fact, um, I love this last episode where it was just her and Richard shooting the shit because Ru- Richard accidentally got high. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it was just a lot of fun <laughs> to see her laughing. And even when she was in the COVID yeah. one, she was just either in a coma or on the beach. And, you know, it was very yeah. dreamy sequence. And, of course, I love yes. seeing everybody come back. But it wasn't her being really being her or just living her life, however flawed it, it is, but you know, yeah. so when you just see her and you just see their back and forth and they're just sitting in a room together, they're not like off on yeah. some grand adventure. It was so much fun just to have those two core characters um, just hanging out, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know if you know this, Nora, but I work at a hospital. So it's oh especially fun for me <laughs> likes to remind everyone to watch the show. <laughs> you are and then loving as people are like, oh, that's so insane. That would never happen. Now they're just getting crazy. I'm like, oh, no, no, crazy shit yeah, happens. No. Where do you think they're getting this shit? This stuff, ha- yeah. crazy things. People come in with bear claws in their arm so in, Mo- in a hospital in Montana. You know, this stuff yeah. happens. 
So carry on, Grays. That's what I say. And, and I, I would totally watch it, Joe. And, they, you know, they're bringing back uh, Addison. I would watch yeah. it if, like, Addison and Joe had, like, a spinoff Absolutely. of their, like, private OB practice. Yes. <laughs> I'd watch it. It's just so funny because I think I think procedurals just will never die on TV. Mm-hmm. That's, like, always something that's inherently it's going to be there. Like, you look at the NBC lineup and it's just a bunch of Dick Wolf procedurals. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the whole Darn lineup. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I got. So, I let us like, go to bed show when I'm in bed. If I find some seasons one through about 12 of Law & Order, 13, I'm like, oh, boom, it's on. Yeah, it's done. I love Let's it. Just so relaxing. It. And they'll just live forever. And I think AB, Grey's Anatomy is that for ABC. Mm-hmm. Like, it is that procedural that they can just keep going as long as they want to. Yeah. Yeah. So, Nora, what do you, so when you hear of new shows coming out for any given season, what attracts mm-hmm. you to a show? Like, what makes you say, hey, I want to check out that show to see if it's something I would like or would want to write about? Or is it the actors, showrunners, the topic, the, you know, what is it? With so many shows on so many networks, like, you can't do all of it. Yeah. Um, like, what, what makes this, sh- what draws you to a show? I always look, well, actors are always a big thing like I always will try a show if a favorite actor of mine is in it um not to say I love everything my favorite actors have done um (laughs) and sometimes I just I'm like I you know I gave it a shot like I tried it um uh so I always do that um that always motivates me because I love obviously I had an attachment to them when they were on a show I watched and now I want to see what they're doing next um so that's always one um top uh my favorite writers that's always a big one like I'll like I know Emily Andres is going to do something and I'll be checking whatever she does and like Phoebe Waller Bridge is and Shonda Rhimes is actually a great example of that where she doesn't really work on Grey's anymore but like I'm watching Bridgerton now and I watched Inventing Anna Mm -hmm. and just like I'm watching all of that stuff because it's in it's in the Shonda Land universe um Mm. and then topic is always like you could have the best showrunner and the best actors around but if it's not a topic I'm interested in, it's very hard for me to keep going. Um, so it's always, I'm always looking at that. Um, I, obvi- most of the shows I watch are obviously like strong female led. It's just, that's just the nature of the things I love. Um, and there's never really like a, I, tr- I usually check out as much as I can. Um, or I'm always, I, sometimes I miss things. Like you said, there's so much on. Um, and then I'm just kind of like listening to see like, what other friends of mine are watching and maybe I should check it out. Even if it's something I didn't originally think I would like. And they're like, no, it's like really good. Like you really got to check this out. I did it recently. One of my friends from work loved mythic quest on Apple. Uh, Hmm. And I was like, Oh no, I don't think this is a show I would like. And they were like, no, you've got to watch it. It's so good. And I ended up loving it. Um, So it's always listening to people because there's some things I just miss. Um, And yeah, it's a, it's a wide there's so much mm-hmm. there's just like it's there's so yeah. much do your friends tell you like hey watch talk about my show <laughs> talk about my show like do they try to get use you to get their show more attention most of the time uh i am the one yelling the loudest oh. <laughs> <laughs> like most of the time i'm like no like can you really get on watching this please like <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like four steps ahead of everybody. And That's I'm true. Like, That's you, frustrating you for you. Scoop on all the good. I'm yeah. like, can you? I was like, please. And then they'll get to it, and they'll be like, you were right. And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's like keep on going. Um, so most of the time, most of the time, I'm shoving my niche interests mm. in, um, mm. in hopes that other people watch it or other people will learn to watch it. And if they're looking for something, because it's so funny because there's so much out there, but I feel like a lot of people feel like they've watched it all like they've Mm -hmm. watched Mm -hmm. but you haven't there's just so (laughs) many it's impossible there's just so many other things um so yeah it's always like looking to see um and I feel like a lot of shows are ending I just like Mm. I think uh, maybe it was the CW Mm. cutting a bunch this past week but I was just like oh like in the fall I'll have like I'll have to find a lot of new shows Mm -hmm. um and it's Mm -hmm. seeing which ones kind of stand out then too yeah that's tough too like I like I've watched Westworld. I'm not like a, a mm-hmm. passionate fan, but I don't even remember when the last season was. And I was like, no. "Hey, season four. I'm like, wasn't that three years ago? <laughs> yeah. Season three. <laughs> TV can be so random. It's like it goes away for a few years, and then all of a sudden, hey, we're back. I'm like, I don't and even I'm, remember what happened. Now I'm trying to remember the plot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, yeah, yeah, this is where we are. It's yeah. tough sometimes. And it's I hard. mean, back in the day, I remember networks were so freaked out. Like 
people remembering what time and channel their favorite shows mm-hmm. were on now like you, or mm-hmm. when we're back and mm-hmm. when we're not on and reruns now it's yep. like who knows mm-hmm. yeah who knows just, i mean unless you're tv savvy you just gotta wade through everything to find and, it but and there's no like yeah there's still the fall network there's still the fall yeah. winter like i hope that never cycle, leaves but, i still like yeah. that it's very reassuring it's i like it cool. i like no and it's like there's so many other things crammed in throughout the like now I do like there's not like that summer lull. Like there's still like yeah. Netflix shows that'll come out and there'll mm-hmm. still be stuff that'll get you through that. But I still do enjoy the like the network cycle of, oh, the fall, there's a bunch. And then you can, if you love it, you'll keep it the whole year and try to, I like two of my favorite shows, new shows this year were Ghosts and Abbott Elementary. Oh. And those are inherently like network shows. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're I love shows. Abbott Elementary. I just got into it's it so and I watched good. the whole thing really good. in like a week. Yeah. Very it's excited. So good. Yeah. But yeah, it's like wild. Like those are two shows I adored this year and they're, vi- they're standard network sitcoms. Like that's what they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was, it's kind of nice to get two of those back. Cause I feel like I didn't have very many um, of just like, you know, a network comedy for a while there. Mm-hmm. I know they just canceled a bunch too. Like CB- mm-hmm. CBS with like stuff I didn't watch. Like a couple, I remember I read and they were like after a couple seasons, they're gone. So it's like, yeah. they kind of keep trying with, Network comedy, network procedurals always seem to find a place, but like comedies, yeah. it's like they're so because the, the comedies that usually have done well lately are just more of the like no laugh track kind of yeah. cool comedies, which are fun, which I like, but they keep trying to, you know, I don't want the traditional sitcom to ever just go away. Yeah. Um, we yeah. haven't had like a, I feel like Abbott Elementary is why people are like we had the office we had parks and rec yeah. and then we had brooklyn 99 mm-hmm. and i think abbott elementary filled that void um so there's always like one of those, but again yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not yeah. like a it works. it's not a, we haven't had like a laugh track at least a big one mm-hmm. in a, a yeah little while. since like big bang i think was the last yeah i was gonna say big, big bang probably. laugh mm-hmm. track kind of show mm-hmm. yeah and um the other ones don't do so well well we we would be remiss if we didn't talk some Marvel. We have to talk Marvel. <laughs> I was yeah. waiting to get to that. Marvel. Uh, but as, as Wendy gave you, uh, before we started recording, she kind of gave you the rule that no none spoilers. of us have seen Doctor Strange in the Multiverse <laughs> of Madness yet. So unfortunately, it's you've will, been tweeting a lot about it. So I'm sure you would have it. so much to talk about. <laughs> I'll keep it close. But we, we, we can't talk about it. Um, but let's, let's talk about... Talk, you know, speaking of sort of chemistry that maybe you didn't see coming, we all really enjoyed Hawkeye. Yes. <laughs> and the Kate Bishop Yelena yes. relationship. Will we see, will they get their own buddy cop, Nora? Will they, movie, will they get their own, can we see them together exclusively? On, I hope on so, screen? so badly. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> like, I would, I would throw all of my money at it. Like, I would, and it reminds me of like the Haley and Florence relationship that is now like that chemistry really reminds me of Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan Mm -hmm. where it was like these two guys we're going to throw them in a scene together and because they're really funny behind like they love each other behind the scenes and let's just see if it works and it did and it obviously took off Mm -hmm. and they got a whole life Mm -hmm. of their own and I think that's a similar thing with Kate and Yelena where it was like these two actresses are phenomenal everybody loves them Let's see what would happen if we threw them in a room together. And literally their best scene is literally them sitting in a room together. (laughs) It's it's literally what all they did. And it was the greatest thing that show. And it went on forever. It was very long. It went on forever. Not much happened. Um, I would love for them to get their own. I want their own movie so badly. Like I would just love it. And I think like we're clearly getting to that point where I just need more of the women fronted Marvel movies. Right. Like, I don't think we can go back. We can't go back to the, we're not giving black widow a movie for like a hundred years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah like, we can't, like that was not something I want to go back to. So I just want to, I hope, I hope they realize like, no, people will go to a theater to see Yelena and Kate, or, you know, they will watch a show with the two of them mm-hmm. like if it's just the two of them mm-hmm. um, so i, oh, I so. feel like too like even in theaters florence Pugh's is big enough now like yes. you can put florence pew and Haley steinfeld and i think you're going to get people going absolutely to, to that movie without question absolutely. i mean there's no concern like but tv now there's they've done so much on on disney plus yeah that which oh, yeah. has been so great and i 
I know you obviously big fan of WandaVision, which to me is still number one. I've loved all of the Marvel movies, but Wanda, it's still on top. Um, but I just love what it's done for like characters like Wanda. I think before WandaVision, it was like, okay, it's Wanda. She's in the movies. And then I remember the first, uh, madness trailer I saw when Wanda showed up, the theater went nuts. (laughs) Everybody loves Wanda now and she just deserves it. The show is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited because she's in it. Um, it so was I loved, wild. yeah, it was okay. wild. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. it was wild. I remember I went to a press screening of it and I, from Spider-Man No Way Home, I was unhinged in the theater <laughs> to the point where I was, I'm in a, like, it's a press, like I'm at work mm-hmm. basically and I'm sitting <laughs> watching Spider-Man No Way Home and a total stranger leans over to me and goes, you need this more than I do and handed me tissues. <laughs> like, that's, oh like, that's what was occurring in that theater. And then I got to the end credits, like where they basically showed the trailer for multiverse. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Oh no. Like, <laughs> so, and I remember then going to a actual screening of it, like when it was out and you're right. Like the applause that she got was mm. so nice to hear because I remember sitting in a theater eight years ago watching Captain America, the winter soldier and she's in the post credit scene. And I'm sitting there going, are they doing the Maximoff? Like, is this happening? To me? Like, <laughs> is this occurring? And being like the only one being like, Oh, it's, it's them. It's them. Like guys, it, we're getting them. Mm-hmm. It's happening. Um, and I think like Elizabeth Olsen has just taken that character so far. And oh yeah. I, and yeah. just like being a Wanda fan, like I love, that WandaVision was as big as it was because I think it proved mm-hmm. like this kinds of stories the MCU can tell and they can be female fronted and everybody will like my younger brother like loved it. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it's nice to see that kind of thing too. I love that they've all been so different. I mean, you have me one, which to me was such a different type of show and it was fantastic. Just, and then nowhere, just you got the, so the dude's buddy action, but with yes. a lot of depth to it, but yeah. action guys, you know, hot guy. And then what was next? Loki? Loki, Loki after was, that, which was kind yeah. of weird, kind of to me, <laughs> like 70s vibe, kind of <laughs> cool all over the, you know, sci-fi kind of thing. And then uh Hawkeye was like, and I remember thinking, I am so not invested in a Hawkeye yeah. show. And I then remember it, thinking the trailer thing comes too. out. Why? Why? It's yeah. Christmas. Why? It's Haley Steinfeld. <laughs> and especially when you heard Florence was going to show up yeah. as Elaine, I'm like, I cannot wait for this. And I love yeah. it. They pulled it off. <laughs> Literally. And he invested in a Hawkeye show. And it was amazing. I literally so. went it. But it go ahead. No, please. No, I just remember them announcing Hawkeye and me being like, am I really going to watch a Hawkeye right. show? Yeah. I was like, I will. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I yeah. will be watching it. But I was like, oh, really? And then, like, it was just like they knew everything they needed to do. Yes. Like, because they, now, totally. because now retroactively watching, like, like after Hawkeye, I did, like, a rewatch of all of, like, Wanda's movies before Multiverse and, like, mm. going back and rewatching Age of Ultron even and Jeremy Renner's scenes with Elizabeth Olsen in that. Like, they just pack a lot more punch. And I'm like, mm. oh, I mm-hmm. maybe I did care about this guy more than I thought I did. Mm. Um, and cared about his relationships a little more because going into Hawkeye, all I was thinking of was like, oh, Natasha died for this guy. Oh, right, like, yeah, right. Oh. <laughs> like, and I like that they fucking, dealt with yeah. that. Too. Right. And, yeah. and then and Yelena called that totally it totally like it was basically my sister yeah. died for yeah. you. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, Yelena and I are on the yeah. same page. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> we are Yelena. Yeah. Well, and I mean, that's what Marvel is just really good at. They're, you know, they have all the, this big sandbox of toys they get to play with and they're, you know, pulling characters that are kind of been on the side up in center, yeah. up front and center. And like, you know, Wanda now is a huge part of, of the MCU. She's at the forefront. Yeah. Again, they made us love Hawkeye yeah. and they, you know, they're bringing these new characters together and, and spotlighting them. It's such, they're, it's brilliant. It's like as a strategy, you know, you give a character their own show and then you put that character in a movie. Everyone's going to want to go see the movie. Like yeah. just mm-hmm. as a business, uh, MCU really knows what the hell they're doing. And obviously they have a plan. Yeah. That's what we always talk about. You know, when we're complaining about Star Wars is that yeah. like, where, who's in charge? There's no <laughs> yeah. plan. There's clearly a plan in MCU. Absolutely. And that's like, oh, thank God. They're there. We're in such good hands with the. With yeah. And everybody knows. I just remember like the Wanda of it all is it's just so nice that they were able to give, like you said, like 
this character that maybe had a total of what, like 10 minutes of screen time in infinity war Mm -hmm. and like this Mm -hmm. big, massive, you know, ensemble thing, but you're able to pluck her out and be like, Oh, here, let's just watch this whole show. And what's interesting about it is I assumed everybody would have watched WandaVision and then you'd go to multiverse of madness. And I had somebody tweet at me the other day when I tweeted about like, um, Wanda, like Elizabeth's performance in WandaVision makes you really appreciate what she was able to do in multiverse. And mm. somebody tweeted at me was like, because of this tweet, I went and watched WandaVision for the first time. Mm. Like I saw multiverse of madness. And then I was mm. like, Oh, maybe I would like that show. Yeah. And then I went back and it was phenomenal. So it's like, everything's working so hand in hand and it's like, so nice. Yeah. How do that you you're not able already to watch like, that? <laughs> that was my question. I'm like you, like, I'll watch whatever. At this point, Marvel, Star Wars, Disney Plus, you roll yeah. it out. Even I'm if like, it's great. something I'm not excited about, yeah. like a character, I, uh, you've convinced you trust, me that you trust there's reason it now. to watch. Yeah. We trust right. you. They've exactly. earned our trust. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, Absolutely. I, you know, any film, any TV show, I'm already there for either one of those anyway, but me too. they've just, man, what, what, what was life like before Disney plus? That's what I don't <laughs> know. Cause I don't, <laughs> it's barely even been around not Boring. that long. Right. No, just over I watched year? so much on mm-hmm. it. I watched yeah. so much on it. We were talking about it, um, at work a couple, like a month or so ago. And it was like, which, if you had to keep one streaming service, what would it be? Hmm. And I was like, wow. I think I'm keeping Disney plus. Like, I don't think I would have said yeah. that a couple years ago because of just like Netflix had so many great things. Right. And I was like, I think I would keep Disney plus by the nature of just alone, Marvel and star Wars, mm-hmm. uh, like based 100%. on that. Um, yeah. and just like the shows they've been able to do and the old content I can rewatch. It's like wild. No, mm-hmm. oh, I think I'm, I, I'm there too. Netflix. You'll fall in love with the show and they'll, Whack and then it off yeah. <laughs> so, don't get invested that, in Netflix. That's my, I was like, I can't really trust Netflix. No, mm-hmm. not anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I agree. Yeah, it's Disney. You know, have, what have you thought about the Star Wars shows? I mean, pretty much all they've had so far is Mandalorian and Mandal- Boba, which Mandalorian has launched a thousand Grogu collectibles. <laughs> and I love yeah. Mandalorian. Boba, I felt was, was a little off the mark. It wasn't as good as I had hoped it would be. The best episodes yeah. were the Mandalorian. Um, that was me. So I think that was just a, you know, misstep of like story yeah. whatever their overall thing i mean i watched it i liked it fine but obviously kenobi coming up mm-hmm. i mean I can't did wait. you get a screener for that i, for that one. Did, I oh, haven't so oh, okay. disney and marvel oh. yeah disney and marvel <laughs> yeah. they obviously as you can imagine hold things well, very close to uh, the yeah. mm-hmm. um they hold them until the last possible second and then they'll give them the okay. um so yeah, I haven't seen Kenobi yet. Um, or else I would be like, oh god, now I'm alone with my thoughts right. for that as well. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited for Kenobi. Boba, like you said, my favorite episodes were the Mandalorian episodes. So I basically would have just liked another season of the Mandalorian. And yeah, in yeah. meantime, um, but yeah, they've been good. Mandalorian, I do love. Like I think that's been really well plotted and has done some really good stuff. And I'm excited for what they you know, continue to do. And hopefully we'll get some good movies again and uh, that kind of thing too. Yeah. (laughs) They just don't have the plan. Isn't Kevin Feige? Is it fake Feige? Isn't he involved somehow in a Star Wars movie coming up? And I think, I think, yeah. Somewhere I think think he's got something, but if Star Wars had half the planning that Marvel Well, and like Marvel, like Kevin said a couple weeks ago that, they are going on a retreat to plan the next 10 years of Marvel. Oh my like, God. Wow. So it's like, so, and like, they had done about it. A dream yeah. Job. yeah. And they had done that 10 years ago to plan where we are now. Um, so it'll be like, and, oh, that's a so phase like, eight by then or phase five. Yeah. <laughs> I don't plan my whole life that meticulously. Smoke a bunch of weed. Just like, yeah, what if exactly. we did this? Did this? Like, I can't imagine like, <laughs> and Kevin was really instrumental in WandaVision. I can't imagine him being like, okay, I have this idea. Yeah. Hear me out. It'll be different sitcoms. Everybody, it'll be <laughs> weird at first, but I swear everybody will be on board by the end. Like, we'll just make it work. Yeah. It's like, wow. Yeah. I love that they said, yeah, we'll try that. That's, that'll be yeah. great. Let's just that'll do work. it. And I think um, it was interesting that that, because originally Falcon and the Winter Soldier was supposed to be the first Disney mm-hmm. Plus show out of the gate. And then everything got switched around. And then they were mm-hmm. like, I, we've got to do WandaVision first. And mm-hmm. even that by nature was a massive swing of being like, it's the first Marvel show on Disney Plus ever, and it's the most out of the box so far. <laughs> like, let's hope everybody likes it. 
Yeah. I mean, when the first trailers or teaser came out, it's like, I don't know. What, what is I'm this watching? show about? Yeah. What, <laughs> what's happening? I don't like to be like, haha, I told you so that often. But I remember the trailer dropping and me being like, oh, Elizabeth Olsen is going to do some Tatiana Maslany <laughs> level acting yeah. in this. And people <laughs> ripped me apart on Twitter. Like, they were like, oh. there is absolutely no way she's up there with Tatiana Maslany. And I'm like, no, like, just wait, I swear. Like, and obviously it ended up being this Emmy award worthy, you know, yeah. acting mm-hmm. performance she gave, um, which is just like so fun to see The WandaVision was so big. Mm-hmm. And like, I talk about like what we were talking about earlier, like changing the plan. Like, I'm assuming mm-hmm. now Kevin Feige is sitting in a room going, how do we keep Elizabeth Olsen? Yeah. Like, how do we keep, mm-hmm. how do we keep her? she's become the like like you said like the applause she got people most people went to multiverse of madness for her Mm -hmm. and it's like how do we like she's now the like chris evans and the robert downey jr going forward so how do we keep her Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. let's figure that out so i'm assuming that's kind of what we were saying like i'm assuming they've had to deviate from whatever plan they've thought of to hopefully and even the hawkeye like yelena and kate like that's another one where it's like i'm sure he's like wait we got to capitalize on this People will go see them, hang out, throw, together, throw yeah. uh, Wanda in there with those two. Oh, I would. Oh my I god! Well. And she just kind of well, watches comments on the chemistry between. <laughs> like, oh, what's going on here? I would die. <laughs> what a sign! Yeah, yeah. credit yeah. to Marvel though for like doing such a good job with casting, not just overall at the beginning for the, like the main ones, but like like you said, like there was like a little thing at the end of one of the films where you saw, I think you know Wanda, and like mm-hmm. sometimes these parts would start pretty insignificantly yeah. and then develop as they went and they got such good actors and all all across the board where you mm-hmm. take any of these smaller parts that started off smaller stick them in their own shows and you're you're good mm-hmm. yeah it's you know, so cool or, like mm-hmm. even um mm-hmm. thinking about how they're doing a maya spinoff from hawkeye like yes she was a big part of that show but think about how much her character's gonna be able to grow in its own show and people mm-hmm. will find it because she was a new character in Hawkeye but people loved her and now she gets her own show to really explore what's going on and that's kind of what's nice about the shows where like even She-Hulk like Tatiana is getting her whole six episodes to do like really have you fall in love with that character so in the Mm -hmm. future if she pops up in a movie you're like oh my god there she is Mm -hmm. like she's back yeah that's always cool too Man, Marvel is just a machine of good. Uh, they know. <laughs> they know what they're doing. <laughs> they really do. Yeah. So what are you excited about? What's coming out that you can't wait to see? And then not, you know, because you get screeners and stuff. So you've probably, I, you've talked about Stranger Things. I'm a mm-hmm. big Stranger Things yeah. fan. So it sounds like you've already got some screeners of that. I do. Aside from things you've already seen mm-hmm. that aren't out yet, what's coming up that you're excited about? Obviously, I'm very excited about Thor: Love and Thunder mm-hmm. in <laughs> yes. July. That, I, that's going to come up. Cool. Yeah. yeah, that I'm really we'll excited see. about. Miss Marvel, I'm sure, is going to be great. Um, I'm really mm-hmm. excited for those. Um, and then I love the Umbrella Academy. That's another show I like really enjoy. Um, I'm excited to see that coming up. Um, and then just like more not like comic booky stuff, like Only Murders in the Building. I love mm-hmm. season oh, one. Yes. So I'm like, good. yeah, I'm really excited for season two. Um, Hacks is airing right now, which mm-hmm. like season two is just as good mm-hmm. as season one. <laughs> um, and I'm so happy. Um, so, yeah, those are those are kind of the big ones right now. And then um, there's some couple other like some movies and stuff. Um, I feel like there's a lot of TV coming out this summer more than usual. Um, and I'm excited to I oh uh the Netflix show First Kill that's coming up it's uh hmm. it's this um it's about it's a queer love story and it's about a vampire that falls in love with a vampire hunter they're two oh. women okay. yeah that comes out in June <laughs> lots of that. angst yes. and drama I'm to be just had. saying yeah. it'll be uh, I'm sure I will be I'll I'm excited to watch it I'm excited to see what they do with and it and what's it airing on um. Netflix. Oh, oh okay. so don't get attached, but enjoy, enjoy it while it's there. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. then they'll rip it away <laughs> from you. Totally. Yes. yes, I will never forgive them for one day at a time, and that's mm. where we're at. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I, I'll never forgive them for the OA. That's my flag uh, I plant with uh, yes. Netflix. There's so many. Ripped their heart out. What's your favorite show of all the shows you watch? You got to well, like, what's t- or film, film and TV show top of the heap. Oh. Oh, top of the heap. That's a very hard question. Not, oh, I'm not asking for a top three. I mean, top, there's one. 
Just like make a list, Nora. Make a list. Maybe it is harder <laughs> to pick one. Maybe it is like, harder to pick one. I don't uh, know. It's hard no, for me okay. to pick one. I mean, I will yeah. like the one I've been watching the longest is it's Grey's Anatomy is like a look, very, look. one I've been watching forever. <laughs> yeah, like that's one. But if somebody asked me, yeah, if somebody asked me my favorite show of all time, like, like right now, I I would say WandaVision would be up there. Like I think that's got to awesome. be for me. Um, yeah. And then. Like, I love Grey's Anatomy. Um, Killing Eve is always Winona. Like, those are, like, mm. I think, like, those are the top of the top um, for TV shows. And then there are, there are certain shows that's so funny because there's certain shows I love the whole show. Like, Schitt's Creek and Winona. Like, I love the yeah. whole show. Mm. But then there's yeah. certain shows where it's like, well, I really like these two characters from this show. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think about that a lot. Like I was a big, like I loved Arrow inherently for Felicity Smoke. Like oh, that yeah. was like, I loved, like I loved what Emily did with that character. Speaking of like derailment and chemistry yeah. and everything. Um, so that's always, Arrow's always got a soft spot. I loved The Walking Dead when it was, you know, mm. talk about a show that's overstayed as well. Though. Um, <laughs> like, Gle like, like Glenn Ree is one of my favorite tv characters of all time i love steven young and what everything he's done since um so i always think about that too um but like in terms of like best shows like i think it's it's gray is obviously through and through considering i'm still watching it live every <laughs> thursday <laughs> like, there's no way i can't think of that and then schitt's creek um how i met your mother was always a big one um yeah winona it always has a soft spot because i love it it's hard to choose yeah it's so difficult mm -hmm. i'm like everybody's like number one and i'm like number like how about 10 like top 10 <laughs> because then i keep thinking of it like i'm like oh wait i love friday night lights like that's up there mm -hmm. in my mind mm -hmm. like, yeah but sometimes you, your top 10 ends up your top 15 crammed into the top yeah, exactly. or the top 10 within the last five years or like what's top 10 all yes, the time right. you know and then I like yeah and then i forget yeah. one i watched like 10 years ago and i'm like oh but right. i love like i I yeah. always think about like I love Freaks and Geeks. Like that's one of my favorite shows. But like, am I saying that's my top ten currently? Because I haven't rewatched it in a while. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So much list content, you see, just different so, time frames. There's all. I should keep a list. <laughs> all about I it. should keep a list of all the TV shows I say are my favorite and see if they stay in the oh, top yeah. ten list. <laughs> Do a yeah. study. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and exactly. Sometimes you just want to put a show in there because, like, oh, but it's always been in there, and I feel bad taking it out. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it'll give you the last place. Yeah. You're still exactly. Yeah, you exactly. Don't, you don't want to hurt its feelings. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it meant a lot to me at the time. Yeah, and then <laughs> they'll know life. I hurt their feelings. <laughs> exactly. Well, Nora, we could. I feel like we could do this for another <laughs> hour. So much fun. <laughs> can we? Can will you come back sometime? We can I talk will. about when when new stuff drops. We can have you back, and we can just chat and chat and chat <laughs> absolutely i'm always around and i love chatting about this kind of thing it's so fun awesome. we, do. we do it every week yeah i love it <laughs> That's true we do. um obviously buzzfeed i think people know how to find buzzfeed yes. but do you want to do you want to what can you what do you want to plug uh yeah uh you can just i honestly like all my stuff on buzzfeed's always there that's where i like all of my celeb interviews and stuff like that um and then twitter obviously at nora dominic it's very hard mm -hmm. to find um <laughs> so difficult um that's where a lot of the nerdy yelling occurs so like i apologize in advance um but that's where the hyper fixation flailing um always um <laughs> like you'll know what i'm really into at the moment because there's just like a string of tweets about it well, I was, and then i'll I was move looking. on yeah i was looking and then at all the wand i'm like oh, yeah. i can't even yeah. talk about that yeah we have to scroll keep scrolling like, keep scrolling we'll if you go back a few weeks it'll be like oh this is when she was rewatching this i understand <laughs> yeah oh yeah but, yeah it's like a twitter is a time yeah. capsule it really is yeah for better or um, for worse sometimes mm -hmm. yeah well nora dominic thank you so much for joining us thank you uh, so this much. has been so much fun we will absolutely invite you back and hopefully uh, we can do this again i would love to thanks guys and we're back nice I, that was fun i didn't want to say goodbye no no but tough. There's just like TV is a vast and wide medium, and there's so many things. I feel like any show we threw out there should be like, oh yeah, you know, she's <laughs> when it's your job. But I like it's so great she gets to to write and tweet and all that about things she's passionate about. It must be tough when kind of living in your own world when you've seen all the, you know, screeners and exciting stuff. You can't talk about oh it my yet. God. 
You know, she's the one like her friends know she's a vault. Like if they have a secret, they're like, she can, she holds the spoilers back for weeks at a time. I can mm-hmm. tell her the secret and feel pretty confident. Mm-hmm. I remember like how that. hard it was the end of Xena when I saw the finale a week early. Oh, that's right. And then I had no one to talk to about it. I didn't spoil it for anybody. It was like, you just want to, especially like that. I mean, with her, it's kind of her job. She does it all the time, but like, you know, as opposed to just, it's that one show that you talk to all your friends. Yeah, but like the, the wine on the earth finale. That must have been yeah. tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any, you know, especially finales and like Killing it's Eve. An- she was like, I knew this was going to go bad, but <laughs> you know. what if it's, I bet it's a fun job. Do you think you'd get sick of TV? I didn't even ask about, do you ever get sick of watching TV? You're just like, I want to take mm-hmm. a vacation and with no TV. In right. the I get sick of writing about it. I think. Yeah. That's true. Having to. It's a lot of work. Well, yeah, it is. Every... See, we could have kept going with her because now I'm thinking yeah. more things like whenever you're watching TV now, are you able to just enjoy it? Or are you always kind of thinking about mm. things to write about That's or tweet question. about or talk about? Mm-hmm. Should we call her uh, back? Should we get her yeah. back? <laughs> Nora, come back. We have more questions. <laughs> we'll have her back for sure. Going to have her back. Uh, yeah, we could. I mean, I feel like we could talk to her every week. Mm hmm. And, you know, we didn't, because of our awesome conversation with Nora, we didn't, we're not going to do a Gentleman Jack recap. Hacks, as she mentioned, is back. We're, we're, we're going to save it. We're going to, we're not forgetting. We're just, uh, we're going to push some of that stuff uh, down the road a little bit. Yeah. And then we'll have maybe. a couple episodes to talk about. Yeah. yeah exactly. And maybe some of us have not gotten a chance to catch up yet. <laughs> so that, that doesn't help too. I don't find, I've been out of town. I'm just not, I'm not slacking. I've just been out of town. Yeah, it's so. hard. It's hard to watch. They don't have TV in Texas. <laughs> That I wasn't able to watch. We just live in log like cabins and stuff. And no TV, no technology. <laughs> no, this week I'm getting back to it. It's been busy. Awesome. All right. I think that's our show. Mm-hmm. Is that our show? All right. Well, good to see you ladies again. And uh, let's do it again next week. Okay. But till then, if you want to hang out, we're on the Twitter at Snot Podcast with 1D. Or on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, by the way, I'm still, this is Tara, I'm oh. still bit kicked off Facebook. Oh, are you? I was going to ask. Uh, it's still under review. So if anyone out there works for Facebook, I've been trying to contact them. When your thing is under review, because I posted once in like four months, uh, there's no way to reach them. You can't log in and like go to the help center. Right. You can't. It's just a blank. It's like a screen that says they're under review. So I, I can't get a hold of anybody. It's been weeks now. That's, what the hell? That's weird. So Facebook and, and Instagram at She Nerds Help Podcast. <laughs> where I was going with that. Uh, you can send us an email to she nerds out at gmail.com. Or if you go to our website, she nerds out.com, you can send us a voicemail. You can leave us a message. You can buy us a beer. You can look at our merch. We have some merch up. Good stuff. People are buying it. We see it. We see it flying off the shelves. Uh, <laughs> and you can catch up on all episodes. And yeah, go to SheNerdsOut.com. There's lots to snop mm-hmm. about. It's where we hang out mm-hmm. all the time. All the we time. live online yeah, we inside SheNerdsOut.com. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's roomy. We're all AI. We're not even real. We're AI. <laughs> Bots. Have Live we, from your trousers. Have we not mentioned that before, that we're not actually real people? Mm. Well, who did they meet at the Z Night retreat? Those were our actors. avatars. Our yeah. avatars exactly. in the real world. Meet puppets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway we'll say goodbye now see you next week until then she nerds out Out. Out. she nerds out we're girls that like girls that like dirty things Hello and welcome. Oh, oh come on. Sorry, start, start that damn over. it. <laughs> <laughs>